All right. Hello, everybody. It is September. We're already into September here. So, uh, again, last week, I apologize for the last minute uh, call change, but we're back on schedule now. So, uh, if you guys have questions, you can go ahead and, uh, and unmute and come on out. Um, not a lot of new updates here this week. I've been uh, out of the office most of the week, so I just got back in uh, late last night. But one thing I was able to catch up on was the uh, the affiliate world. I get the uh, affiliate magazine, and they're they're running affiliate East right now. And I was I was reading through there uh, while I was out this week about some of the you know the new articles and and tips and tricks and stuff within the affiliate world. Kind of interesting. I would say there was a quite a number of new articles about advertising, pay-per-click, uh, even SEO. And it was amazing. It was like there was a common thread that I've not seen before, all talking about segmentation, all talking about specific target markets all talking about narrowing your focus and speaking the right language imagine that so this this is finally catching up and catching on that that this is truly the way to do this stuff so now the whole affiliate world is is catching up to it so in my opinion that's a good thing for you know, just advertising in general, it's a bad thing if you're not on track yet. <laughs> because, the, again, the idea of having inside information is so you can get the advantage out of it before everybody catches up. So this is, this is the, the freight train is rolling down the track. So if you've got competitors, this information now is getting trickled out to the open the open market so not to say they're going to have uh, have an advantage over you because you guys know a lot more about this and a lot more how to do it rather than just the overview of hey this is what you need to be doing um, you know a lot of people see that they don't get it they breeze over it and it doesn't take so anyway but that i thought that was kind of interesting to see that common thread come into play throughout all the different speakers all the different uh, people writing articles all the tips and tricks it was it was kind of an interesting uh common commonality type thread so anyway anybody got questions go ahead and uh, come on out here hey hey hi good morning hey gregory how's it going uh, I'll, I'll take the leadership and the arrows in the back. <laughs> All right. Okay. So M M Michelle and I spoke uh, previously, and um, we got a lot of I got a lot of views again. I'm, I broke 1,200 since July 18th. I know I'm 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 I'm, I'm estimating I'm close to 550 distro cards. So people are jumping on the apps one way or another. Um, so the next evolution is her and I are going to be talking about the white paper. And um, and reason why is because I'm I'm I met the chamber the head of the chamber of commerce of LA County yesterday at my club, mm -hmm. and music center is interested, and um, a couple of majors are out there, but I don't want to go approaching them yet until I really have learned my pitfalls. So in the white paper, the question is here's the, here's the question. In doing a presentation for a white paper, what questions, other than, of course, they're going to ask about the apps and all, but what questions would, would business, big business, be asking in, if they say, you know, we're going to do this as a, as a private app to our company, what questions would they, would they be asking me? That I would well, have on, a, on a white paper, white paper is typically a, a tech paper or like people that are going to implement things. Now, if you're doing uh, stuff for, for marketing for Michelle's, Michelle's, I think Michelle's going to clear up the, the, 
John, oh. he's talking about white label apps, not oh, white I'm paper. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, okay. I apologize. Gotcha. Okay. I, I apologize. Thank you, Michelle. That's why you're there watching me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I was. I thought you were talking about like a traditional white paper. Which oh, is, I apologize. Yeah. That, that's more of a tech thing for. Yeah somebody looking for details on, you know, how something works or, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as for a white label, if you're trying to put a white label uh, promotion thing together, it would be more of like a, a Q and a thing might be more appropriate for that. And what you need to do is anticipate what their questions would be before they even ask them. Uh, what you'll find in a lot of cases is sometimes they don't really even know what the question should be. So the fact that you're answering the questions they should have really helps them. So that's, that's the thing you want to do is you want to map out, okay, knowing what I know about, you know, the whole universe wrapped around this, uh, you know, and this goes for anybody for whatever you're doing, take the whole universe of, of what you're doing and figure out what all the all the common questions would be and in your answer of the questions you're spinning it toward marketing you're you're really creating a marketing piece in your q and a you know like i always say everything that you create should be based on marketing whether it's a you know a q and a or whether it's a, a video or a description or an introduction even a press release you know, it could be a press release about the company or a press release about a new employee or whatever. You always kind of spin it toward, you know, marketing. Always say, whatever it is, this is why it's going to be good for you. You know, the, the wrong thing to do is talk about why it's good for itself or why it's good for, you know, for the company or anything like that. It should always be geared around what's good for the person on the other end. And that's where it becomes, that's where it turns from just a, a, you know, propaganda to actual promotion. Promotion is promoting, uh, you know, someone to get interested. It's, you know, it's advertising, marketing. So keep that in mind, whatever you do, whatever images you create, whatever videos you make, whatever Q&A sheets you make, web pages, Whatever it is, any kind of an opt-in, if you create it to marketing standards and you're getting people interested, they're going to be much more apt to take your calls to action, whatever those might be. Maybe you want them to call to set up an appointment. Maybe you want them to opt-in. Maybe you want them to watch a video. Maybe you want them to buy something. Whatever that is, if you do the marketing right, you'll create the demand and desire and remove the objections and then they'll take the action that you're asking for you know it's pretty simple when you break it down into those key components but to do that again you've got to be very specific you have to know who you're talking to and what they need what they want even if they don't you know like when you're dealing with someone who's unaware of what you've got like specifically for Michelle a lot of people are totally unaware that that even exists so creating that whole idea of, hey, this is something I didn't even know about, but I have to have it because it's going to do this for me. And I never thought I could even have that. You know, if that, if that makes sense, that's what you want to try and create with your marketing, no matter what level of awareness you're at. If you're at an unaware level, that's okay. At that point, you have to make them aware. So same thing with a Q and A. You could be making them aware of things that they weren't currently aware of that benefit them greatly. So that's a great use of a Q and A, just to ask the questions they don't know to ask. You know the so that uh, that might be a, a a great way to go. Let's see here. Did my did my voice cut out there for a minute? Just a little bit. No, oh, so the computer said my my uh, audio switched. That's, <laughs> what that's all about. <laughs> well, so, so my white label thing is happening is that 
my one of my one of my key possible my one of my key clients or possibilities is the music center. I already talked to him twice. The uh, the person and he says you're being set up for a meeting with the marketing person uh, in about a month. Uh, because right now they're in the middle of of transitioning from the Hollywood Bowl down to downtown, and then they're all there. They're they're getting all their print advertising done and taken care of. Then his idea is to, and I on the white label is to have the music center logos. So they do LA Opera, then they have the video of their upcoming shows for LA Opera. They do a, a thing about a, a resident company like the, uh, like a, like a ballet company. The LA uh, I'm not doing ballet, but but a resident ballet company. Then the Be LA Ballet Company's logo will then come to life. That's their long range from the conversation I got with my point person. The question of like, the, the white label thing is me getting in there and showing it to them. And here's an idea that I was contemplating. I still have my card, right? Okay. But I'm going to go out on the net and try to find a 30 second or 45 second of their commercial ad. Because so they do run ads on TV occasionally here in LA County. Snap that, load that video up to my card. I know it might take other people who have my card and prior uh, by surprise if they go back to my card at all. But the point is that at the demonstration, I said, this is my card. Now imagine my card being your logo. And then when I play back the video, it will be their company. So I, I would be able to say, hey, this, and then the, and like, well, like when I, the marketing person from what I'm, I understand is the one for the LA Opera. So when I, I will show off a clip of the LA Opera. I don't know. It, that, it sounds good to me because if I'm a client and I see my ad running off my, <laughs> off this thing, that would like, what do you, your, your opinion, please. Michelle, did you have something there? I see you. I yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that um, <clears throat> it, it is always good when you're trying to pitch a bigger client to give them as much of their own content to wow them with their own, you know, stuff. I, I think that that just resonates with them much, much higher. But when you're talking about a white label app, John, what, he, what we're referring to is like when a corporation sees Revealio in action and doesn't really see themselves wanting to send their clientele to a Revealio app, sure. that we can essentially take the Revealio app as it is and just put their branding all over it. So the UI is all theirs. That's what we call a white label app. Okay. Um, but of course we can customize any white label app if they want us to add additional functionality so that it's even more robust for them so that it really interacts with whatever their needs are, you know, what their community's needs are or anything like that. So um, I, but, 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 but in order to get those apps sold, he, he can demo Revealio, but he can demo specific content like he was saying, mm -hmm. use his business card because he has control on the back end to be able to go and swap out that video daily. So Gregory, I think personally, I think that you're going to get a lot more wow factor when you show them their content. Um, so you can try that, see how that works. It makes a lot of sense to me to do that and then just swap out the video um, back to your message. Like when you're done with that demo, just let them know that you did this just for this, for this meeting. But if they want to do this for themselves, they can do this and more, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's a great idea. I see that a lot with, uh, with customized postcards and things and, and even emails, you know, where they'll, they'll grab a picture of your website and pop it in there. And it's an attention grabber. Like when you see your own stuff, it, it's like, wow, why is that in there? Where where'd that come from? So from an intention grabber, uh, point of view that that is a great thing to do a lot of companies do that the other thing you know if you're if you're promoting this out to a bunch of people and you don't want to go through the hassle of creating all those customized videos for them what you could do on the white label promotion like if you're going to make a video that explains the white label thing you could wherever the revealio app is you could put a thing, you could swap the Revealio app out with a your logo here or your brand here. And then, you know, say this could be branded under your name. So it looks like, you know, this is your technology or this is coming directly from you. 
that's another way to, to do that. If you've just got like a couple of major big hitters, then it might be worth the while to go ahead and customize, you know, for those presentations. But if you want a little bit more generic type thing to, to go across the board, like there's a lot of, a lot of offers, you know, across the internet marketing space of where they'll allow you to white label their, their software. And that's the way you'll typically see it in the ad because they're sending it out, you know, through their affiliates and everybody. So obviously they can't customize the branding for those presentations and they'll just, you know, they'll show it and they'll say it. They'll, you know, they'll put the, your brand here and then they'll just tell you why that's important. And it's same thing back to marketing, wherever you're going to give someone a benefit or a bonus, you have to explain why this is good for them, you know, why they would want this. And when you do that, you create more demand and desire. Like somebody might see the, the app and think, yeah, that's really cool. But then you're going to lay another layer on it that, wow, that could be, people could be saying, I'm really cool if, if they thought that was mine. So, and again, it's all back to marketing. It's, it's what, how many different layers do we need to layer on before it's just a no brainer and they just want to pull their credit card out and buy whatever it is. And that's a, that's a really good thing. You know, white label is a great incentive for people with, with technology stuff. Like if you see a really awesome piece of software that you could use and you know, a lot of people could use it and you can brand it. So it looks like yours. And now you're the hero bringing this to market. That's a great thing. A lot of people go for that. That's the whole ego play. Entrepreneurs go for that big time, you know, especially the, the higher up you go and the more powerful they get, the, the more greedy they get. So that uh, greedy and power hungry, all that good stuff. So yeah, that, uh, you know, in short, I think that's a, uh, that's a cool way to go, especially if they're big and you know, you could, uh, you really need to make a custom tailored presentation to them. So I see Ted, uh, threw out something here in the chat box as Google ads now need to have branding on the banners. That's, uh, I kind of figured that was coming, but I didn't know it was here yet. So that's, uh, that's interesting to know. I'm actually going to start running some some uh, paid Google ads here pretty quick to promote the uh, the ACT program. Like I said last time on, I started doing the keyword research, and I am still in the process. I, I kind of described how ominous that chore was at this point, and I, I've been out of town, and I really didn't get a chance to play with it at all over the last week, but now that I'm back in, I'm going to jump into it. Maybe next week I can uh, bring that back up and show you guys what I actually came out with. Very interesting, though. A very interesting learning process, seeing how many of those really obscure long-tail keywords have people searching for it, but no one is bidding. So in old-school methods, we would look at that as, well, those keywords probably weren't important, so we shouldn't go for them. We shouldn't optimize for them. And, and again, when you're optimizing, it's a very different strategy when you're doing SEO versus pay-per-click. Pay-per-click, you don't really care how many people are there because you can buy the traffic and it doesn't cost you any more. Now, with SEO, it's going to cost you for anything you want to rank because you're going to have to do stuff. You're going to have to optimize for it. And if there's not enough people searching for it, it doesn't make sense. You could never make the numbers work for, for that strategy in SEO with very uh, low volume keywords that didn't have a lot of profit in them. But on the pay-per-click side, that the rule doesn't apply because you could buy them so inexpensively, you don't have to have a lot of any one. And what I'm finding is there's a ton of different variations of these long tail keywords that look very good, not very many people searching them, but again, no one bidding on them. So you could literally buy these things for like 10 cents a click. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, go ahead, Ted. So how do you separate SEO keywords from CPA keywords? Well, 
yeah, again, it's it's just kind of like that. With SEO, what, what we're typically looking for is we're looking for keywords that fit into our strategy of where we can get the most bang for our buck. Because when we go for an SEO keyword and we're gonna, we know we're gonna spend money on it, we know it's gonna cost us a certain amount to drive it to the top to get that traffic. If there's not enough people searching for it, then that doesn't make sense. If there's not enough profit in it when we do get them there, then that doesn't make sense. So we're, again, it's kind of like picking the most profitable segment of your market. You've got to have certain criteria to make that happen. Like in the, in the profitable segmenting, we look for, is the market big enough to justify our sales goals? Do the people in there have the money to buy our product? And do they have the willingness to actually pay for it? So with SEO, it's kind of the same thing. The size of the market is the, the sphere of how many people search it. The profitability factor is if they do buy the product, let's say they come in for that keyword and they buy that particular product, how much profit is, is there for us? So you have to look at that when you're looking at SEO. SEO is very, very strategic. Now, SEO has a long-term factor that plays in that, that gives you a huge boost and bonus because a lot of other long tail keywords rank and bring you a bunch of the same type of traffic too. But with pay per click, it's like you're looking for the loopholes that you can take advantage of. So you don't need to have a lot of search volume if you can buy a click for 10 cents and it's the right kind of keyword phrase, then it totally makes sense. What you try not to do is you try not to look for the keywords in, in pay-per-click that are generic, that have huge volumes of traffic and you know a ton of people are, are bidding the price up to where there's no way you could afford to buy that. Again, you gotta know your numbers. If you know, hey, I get a 10% uh, conversion ratio, so it takes me 10 out of every 100, I'm going to sell something, or one out of 10, rather. If you've got, you know, $2 profit and it's costing you a dollar a click and you need nine of them to get that, that, you know, that sale, those numbers don't work unless you've got a really robust back end that you can make it up. And that's... Right, but, right, but how do you separate those keywords in, in, in SEMrush? Oh, well, it's, it's completely manual. It's, you know, there's ways. To, what I do is I export them out into an Excel spreadsheet, and then I can sift and sort. But really, ultimately, it comes down to a very manual process of looking through them and making the decision. There's no, like, automated tool I know of that'll just spit you out and say, hey, here's your, here's your best keywords for pay-per-click, and here's your best keywords for SEO. I have yet to come across that tool. If anybody finds it, definitely let me know because I'm buying it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's been cool tools along the way, but none of them really, uh, none of them really go to that extent. You know, they don't, they, they can't make that human decision for you. Of, you know, is this really a good keyword? You base your criteria, but then you got to look at it. You always got to look at it. So, and that's what's, that's what's taken me so long is, you know, when I churned this list, I came up with like 50,000 keywords. I went through and I, I used that process we talked about last week to, to generate this jumbo list. And now I'm segregating them. And this is another thing in, in pay-per-click too that you need to do is you need to categorize your keywords. Like you, you create these little silos of keywords that are very specific so you can land them on the right landing page. Like when I'm doing a, a pay-per-click program for ACT, I'll probably have 10 to 20 different landing pages based on those keyword groups. I'll set up a group that's very specific to one particular keyword. Like for instance, if somebody's looking for a course versus a class. If they have in their mind that they're looking for a class, they see that differently from a course. Now I've got keywords that are courses and classes. 
So I'm going to split those. I'm going to separate those into two different groups. The landing page where they click on that they're looking for a class, guess what? I'm going to speak that language. I'm not talking courses. I'm talking classes. So very important on a conversion standpoint that you speak their language. It might just be that subtle little difference right there. And that's why in pay-per-click you segregate. You, you create these groups, keyword groups, and you drive the keyword group traffic to that particular landing page. And you know, that's also how you get a good quality score. If, if people are interacting with your ad, they're clicking on it, they're going to the landing page, they're taking the call to action, Google knows that's a quality page. They wanna send more traffic to it. So they're not gonna penalize you and increase your bid rate because you're wasting their traffic. They, they really don't like that. They don't like sending even paid traffic. They don't like sending even paid traffic to bad, poor user experience. So you gotta, you know, you gotta play by the rules. If you want, if you want Google to love you, you gotta love them back. <laughs> you gotta play by their rules. You know, it's like, uh, you know, when you were a little kid, if you didn't do what dad wanted, you got in trouble and you, you know, that made you want to please him more to get his affection. Google's the same thing. If you don't please him. He's not going to be happy. He's not going to give you that, that affection. <laughs> so you guys should, should really want to play by the rules and understand them because that affection from Google means money. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what we're here for. So let's see, anything else here? All right, Travis, you are uh, a little bent out of shape with Infusionsoft, I see. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've had about enough. You've hit the end of your rope? <laughs> I was wondering when that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I've had enough. I mean, yeah, it's... I needed to remove a few things from my plate in order to be able to approach the project. But at this yeah. point, yeah, I, I got to do it. Even just by virtue of the sheer deliverability alone, you know, the deliverability is so, so awful. And you know, it's, it's just the dumb stuff. It's like the, it's the lack of like p people are trying to check out, they're trying to buy stuff in like Holland, but Infusionsoft can't accept an address that has like the U with the little dots over it. You know, it's, Stupid stuff like that that's causing declines. And, you know, I, I don't, you know, I wonder if they could just hit the letter U. I, I don't know. But I heard at least three people say that this time, which means there's at least 30 people that didn't say that this time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's just, that's just kind of uh, one of many things. So, yeah, I'm looking heavily into the Carter side of things. You know, I, I just, it's like every, everything seems to have its drawbacks though like i was just experimenting with five yeah. heart and it's like okay you, you can't you can say you got to use their buttons and it's got to be one upsell at a time so i can't have a full price and a subscription option and it's you know and if they if the, if the payment fails it doesn't have like a backup form you know so i'm, I'm just trying to find something that actually is <laughs> that's actually you know well thought out and um, you know, do, does Kartra offer the ability to redirect users to a, an upsell page based on their existing tags? Because that's yeah. something – it does. Yes. Yeah, okay. it, does, it does do that. Got it. Okay. Yeah, because you know, I can do that with a little paid add-on that I have for Infusionsoft. Okay. I assume they do campaign expiration. You can make the links and stuff expire. Yes. Okay, I, I see on their sales page they offer both subscription and you know full price payments. I guess people have an option on the product itself. Yeah, uh, you can you can create a vast array of different pricing options and and special pricing and you know expirations of that. You can even set it up to where like any person that comes in, whatever date they come in, they get that price for so many days and then it expires for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my. Uh, I mean, again, I, I can do that with Infusionsoft. I just have to pay extra. I have to pay like a hundred bucks a month for some additional software, which then, of course, has to to integrate. Okay, yeah, and that's, and that's kind of a cool thing with Kartra is they you don't get nickel and dimed for you know all these additional things. It's all kind of 
built I right know. Yeah, I pay like an extra 300 bucks just to not send email from Infusionsoft servers and to just be able to go through Amazon S3. And, and do you guys have any data on their deliverability at this point? Or is it, you know? Uh, from Kartra deliverability? Yeah. I don't. I haven't. They're very, very picky about the only thing I've, I've come across. Sometimes I'll have customers that they've actually blacklisted, you know, because they got flagged on some other site. They're very, uh, they're very protective of their network. Good. Okay. That's good. So yeah. that, if anything, they're, they're like too restrictive, I think. Got it. But, you know, all you have to do is just send in a, a support ticket and they clear them. No problem. Yeah. Well, that's, I would rather it be too restrictive. That's, that's my type of people. Yeah. Because I have a very good open rate and I'm not a spam emailer. So I would like to sure. be protected by their, their pickiness. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they even blacklisted me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I have two different addresses and I, I set up two test campaigns so I could just make sure everything was working right. And I sent an email out to a group and I noticed I didn't get the email. And I went back in and I looked and the reason was I was, I had actually been blacklisted for some reason. Wow. So, wow. you know, that's, <laughs> wow. that's now, interesting. So now if, you, if you, a user clicked on a one click upsell in thrive car, or I'm sorry, in, in Kartra and it failed, would they get bounced to a regular checkout page where they can then fill out the checkout page and potentially use a different payment method or, or something like that? Because that was one of the main disqualifiers for Thrivecart was if it failed, it failed. They're like, hey, we're sorry your order failed. Yeah. Like, I want to send them the ability to get another option in here or <laughs> come on. I believe they do. I, I don't know 100% for sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that they did. Right. You would certainly think they do. You know, yeah. Like a, especially yeah. if you're going for a bigger ticket upsell you know yeah if, you know if you just don't have a thousand bucks on that card or whatever you'd like to think that it's you know people would have the ability to put in a new card yeah they do they've got a lot of variations they've got a lot of automations too like if this happens then do this right so everything i've seen in there has a has a custom automations button to where like if you have a special circumstance or situation you can you can set up the rules for it. Right, right. Got it. Like if this Got happens, it. then then do that. If you're using Amazon to send mail, you can do that also through uh, through Kartra. You can really set a different mail gateway. Yes. Oh, cool. Absolutely. Wow. Like they have the Kartra mail gateway. You can also use your own pop account to send mail. You can, you can set up additional mail gateways and then you just choose the one you want for the campaign. That's fascinating. Cause I was actually improved, uh, approved for my own private email server oh. uh, from Amazon. Um, yeah. I guess based on my, my S3 sending. Um, but I never, there's never a point where I want to deal with that drop in deliverability because right off the bat, you have a drop in deliverability when you're moving to a new server and you haven't broken it in and established your credibility on that server. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've just been bouncing back and forth, but it, I'll get that done at some point. Okay. So that's, that's all fascinating. Other than the, um, the backup checkout form, which just seems like such common sense that I would assume <laughs> they have to have it on there. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would think so. Yeah, that all that all sounds pretty good. Um, I got a quick SEO question. Okay. My video, How to Fight Multiple Attackers, dominates every single iteration of the search term, How to Fight Multiple Attackers, How to Fight Multiple Opponents, How to Beat Multiple Attackers in a Fight. It pops up a big YouTube video right on top. It, it, you can't beat it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's total, total dominance. That with How to Fight Bigger People as well. And I'm going to get catch the knife game soon. But on that, so the, the video, it's a good video. Okay, it's a good video, but this, I made it a few years ago. I'm just better now. And I had found a few examples of this, this stuff that I'm recommending actually working in multiple attacker fights. Okay. Uh, and I would love to, like, I would love to update the video. And, of course, you can't, you can't do that with uh, YouTube. Yeah. But what, what would you, what do you think the consequences would be if I put up a YouTube card within the first 10 seconds that said, uh, hey, check out, the, uh, check out the updated version of this video. 
Because now you have the paradox where, you know, the people are now going to your site and there's potentially a buy now button. They can click up right underneath it and they get the better version of the video. But now all of a sudden you're basically, you're, you don't have the, 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 the depth, the, the, the page time on the initial video to potentially maintain the SEO results. So I would assume some large percentage of people will, will not click the updated video card. They're, they don't care. They're happy to be on YouTube and they don't like to leave. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, some people would, and therefore that would decrease the user metrics of this particular video. Uh -huh. So I guess that, that's the question. What's, how would you handle that paradox? Sure. Well, there's a couple of things that I might do. One would be create a playlist and have your, your secondary video follow the first one. So as soon as your first video ends, the second one starts playing. Okay. So that, that's number one. Number two, I would go into your description of the video. And, and I would put right in there, new update 2018, and then a link to it. Okay. Because that's going to grab them. Right. That's going to grab them. 2018 update, even, uh, even for a, like the YouTube pop-up, that would be great. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So you, you but, but you're of the opinion that it would be a good idea to redirect them to the new video instead of this one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, if that video is getting traffic, you know, you don't want to mess with that. So I, I, I'd be even reluctant to change the title. You know, right. It's, you know, it's stuck so well, it's so solid. You don't want to mess with that, but you want to add to it. Yeah. The other thing you might do is create this new video, use the same title, but put in the title of the new one, new update for 2018. Oh, so release a new and video. Then, and then hopefully uh -huh. it could overtake it. Uh-huh. Got it. Point, hopefully it could overtake it. Got it, got it, got it. That's interesting. But you don't want to lose that one that you've got in the process. Right. So be be careful with that. But I would do everything you can to get views to this new video because that's going to give it the traction in YouTube. That's going to give it the attention over in Google too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a massive search term. It's probably like you know fifty people a day, or you know, it's not. It's nothing crazy. Well, still, it's, you know, it's all good and it all gives good traction to everything else that you've got. True. But yeah, yeah that, that's a, you know, a couple things you might do. The other thing you might do is, uh, you know, paid ad where you actually lay it on top of your, your existing video. Mm. And you're, you know, you're kind of paying for things you've already got. So I don't yeah. know if that's optimal. Right. You know, I might lay it on top of other people's videos though. Right, 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 right. Because I can tell you from a click-through standpoint, putting the date and they see that, they see it as new. Everybody loves new. Yeah. Like if you're looking for something, typically our, our brain says new is better. New is improved. Right. I want the current thing. I don't want something from last week, especially in, in any kind of competitive uh, environment, which you're definitely in that realm. Yeah. 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 No, that's very true. I do the same thing. I won't look at product reviews from a year ago. Not a chance. Sure. Sure. So anywhere where you can grab that and, uh, you know, new, improved, updated 2018, definitely smack that in there. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's, I think that's all I got for right now. Okay. I guess I'm, I'm in on Kartra. If you want to email me an affiliate link. <laughs> okay cool I'll yeah mine, mine's really easy it's internetdominators.com forward slash cartra <laughs> perfect pull it up right now <laughs> that's a piece of cake <laughs> all right awesome yeah k-a-r-t-r-a -R -R yep got it got it thanks john hey, sure. can i jump in here on this cartra thing sure absolutely um i've been using it for a good couple months now and i can tell you that i am a bit frustrated with the email um, the way that you upload lists and um, when you create a, a new list and you go to upload people to that list, they don't seem to automatically get entered into that list unless you place a tag on them. So that's kind of different. You need to okay. know that. Okay. Um, okay. And then also the analytics 
aren't um, as user friendly as I would like them to be. So okay. um, you you do get a trial with this, Travis. I would tinker around with the email side of it if that's something that you're going to use a lot of. Just Got so it. That, just so that you know how it works. Yeah, yeah. I did just make that mistake with Thrivecard. I jumped in. I grabbed the grabbed the big license, and I'm like, wow, this is useless to me now. <laughs> mm. yeah um and then the other uh the one thing that john said he hadn't tested on the the car trust side that i have is the affiliate program right john mm -hmm. you had you had migrated yeah. your affiliate program over yeah i'm just getting ready to do that in fact i wanted to get your get another pass through so yeah go for it let it tell us okay what, so <laughs> um it's very confusing um because Kartra is an overarching master like affiliate software. They, when you have somebody sign up to be your affiliate, they actually get a welcome message email from Kartra. And that's really throwing people off. Mm. So, and then the other thing I call, I wrote to Kartra and I said, well, can I bypass or at least have an, a, a tag assigned to people who do go and, and, and use the link that I sent them to become my affiliate. Can I at least have a tag applied to them when they uh, uh, populate the form that is essentially the Kartra affiliate form? Because Kartra is a marketplace for affiliates. For all the different people who use Kartra, you can make it so that your products and services are available to be sold by all affiliates within Kartra. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a master affiliate kind of account. So what I was asking Kartra is, can I have a, a tag assigned to my people specifically so that I can at least have that tag trigger an autoresponder email sequence so that they can be getting notification from Revealio because I didn't want them to be confused. Why are they getting an email from Kartra? Right. Anyway, so that is a little bit of a weirdness. It's not, I've never seen that before. And, um, and then once you have, a, like we have a two tier system. So when you have somebody that somehow comes in under somebody else, if they didn't have the link right or something is wrong, I cannot, I do not have the power myself to go in and fix that. I cannot assign a JV over a regular affiliate hmm. and Kartra evidently can't either. So that was a little bit weird. I just, yeah. I'm just being straight up honest with you guys. It's been a little that's, bit frustrating. That's interesting stuff. I mean, it, it, I, I don't even have any affiliates. I don't have a single affiliate. Everything I sell, I'm usually selling my own list. And I can't imagine a, a situation where I wouldn't like you. Not do you get affiliates without talking to them? Like, how, how does that? Yes, I actually have gotten an affiliate, and it could be from Kartra's marketplace. Huh. Um, it, I mean. Affiliate marketing is really taking off, and, and, and in some respects, it's really cool to know that Kartra is potentially helping market me out to a huge affiliate base. Right, right. For my own, for my own people, you know, when, when you, so for instance, you have a form that you, or, or you have a, a call to action button that you say, click here to sign up to be an affiliate. They click on that, and they're going to get taken to a form. That form is Kartra's affiliate form. Okay. We and you can't put any of your own branding on that, is what you're saying? No, we can't. Huh. And and we can't we can't make it so that when somebody taps on our call to action button off of our website within Kartra, that that we have a, a, a tag assigned, you know, so that we can have anything auto triggered on our end. Um, so it is a little bit a little bit different, John. I just want you to be aware of that. I'll, I'll ask, uh, I'm going to ask Jason about that because he's using it for um, affiliate or uh, influencer spy. And I know when I went in to sign up, I had to, I had to click a particular button and he's within Kartra and I had to sign up for his affiliate program and he did have the branding on that page. So I'll ask him what, you know what I, mean, I have a I have a landing page John don't get me wrong I have a landing page that's all branded to me and the call to action buttons branded to me as soon as they click on that branded button then a Kartra form pops up with just asking questions yeah yeah it's pretty generic looking it doesn't have any particular color scheme on it or anything like that you fill out these questions assuming 
you're signing up to be like a revealing affiliate, right? Yeah. And then and then they hit submit. And then the only thing that happens to on my end is that if I happen to have Kartra open, I have like a little one show up on the back end, letting me know that somebody's you know requesting to be an affiliate. But they get an autoresponder email from Kartra. Did you get an email for, that says welcome to Kartra? I don't, I don't remember because it's been a few weeks ago when I did that, but it's mm -hmm. to me like he, he had the branding. So I'll ask him about that. And if there, maybe there's something we're not aware of. Yeah. Cause I, I pretty much wrote to them saying, guys, this is confusing. What can you do to help me? <laughs> yeah. But I, I do know I've got quite a number of affiliates that have signed up that I don't know who they are. They, uh, they must have just found me within the Kartra affiliate network, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool, you know. Yeah, there's pros, there's cons. I just wanted you to, to share share some of the things that I've experienced. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So can you choose not to sign up with the affiliate page? Like, hey, I don't want to be an affiliate and I don't want any affiliates? No, uh, yes. Yeah, when the only way you really add yourself into their affiliate network is when you create a product in Kartra, it asks you if you want to be part of their network or if you want this to be private just to you. So you do have that ability to be in or to be out of their network. Yeah. And it's based product by product. So you might have some products you do want their network to promote. You might have some that Hey, no, these are these are mine, and you can't play. <laughs> okay. So, John, I I am ready to start using Kartra. All of this is very, uh, I would say, not not good news to listen to all of the stuff that people have to say about it. Um, <laughs> but but my where where I want to start is. Um, is very small okay? okay simply because i have um a list of emails that i need to send to customers and i need to allow them to reply just to the email which on ours what we end up with is they have to go in they can't reply to the email that they got they have to go in and create another one and okay. it's very clunky so um and it's um, it's important that we get this right. Okay. And well, with I, with the Kartra, they do have the reply feature, so they can they can just hit reply and and just go right back to you. Okay. So I I kind of need to get that going. Okay. And I want to make sure that that I use it as a test for other emails because one of the things I thought I don't know if this is going to be the case, but I would like to perhaps use Kartra as our, uh, as our CRM contact so that, that it's easier for us simply yeah. because illusions, it, it, one of the things is, one of the big things is that people can't reply to it. Sure. And, uh, and, and the tracking is just really appalling. So if I, you know, if I start to get things like that down pat, maybe I'll be able to expand and use Kartra for other things, but I, I need to test it for the okay. beginning. I think for you, rather than, rather than starting off using it as your CRM, because all of your data is going to be in Volusion. Yes. But I think where it would really shine for you is on the promotion end, on promoting and just keeping in contact with your customer base because you can export your list and you can segment the list down, get it over in Kartra and attach tags to the segments of your list. And then that will give you the ability now to communicate with your list like you've never done before. And I think I, I've said this, you know, right from the beginning with you, I think that's going to be your biggest benefit of any marketing is just communicating with your existing customer base. I agree with you, but the, yeah. but I do see that that it can be a bit awkward doing using two different pieces of software to connect with my customers. Yeah. Well, the the only thing you have to do is just make sure that your links go. Like, 
if you're promoting a product that's being sold over on your Volusion site, you just need to link to it, but have that open communication so people can reply and respond back and ask questions and, you know, you have that open communication factor, which I don't think you have now. I, well, it's not easy for people. So when we send somebody um, information, we have a product that was out of stock and people are waiting for it, right? And yeah. unfortunately, I've got hundreds of orders waiting. And, and then you have to send them an email and say, you know, let us know if you want to continue to wait or whatever you want to do. Uh -huh. And instead of being able to reply to that, they have to go and create a new, a new reply. Yeah. Yeah. See, that would, that would be a disaster. Yes, it, it truly is. Yeah. So, so somehow I need to, I would like to get it all in one place. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and who knows if the new Volusion was any better, but, uh, but clearly what I've got is not working and I need, I need to do something. The other thing, and I don't know if you know anything about Magento, uh -huh. whether, whether that would be any better than Volusion building a new thing in Magento. Yeah, I believe Magento would probably be a whole lot better than Volusion. I know quite a number of people. I don't have a lot of personal experience with it myself, but I know a lot of people that work in Magento and they have for years. And uh, I've never heard any anything like, you know, negative like I have with Volusion. <laughs> so, so the, can I take all my stuff with me when I, if I move over? Um, the only reason I don't know the answer to that is I don't know what you can get out of Illusion. I don't know how closed and tight they are with, with what's in there. From what I've seen, trying to get information out of your email list, I would say you might have some difficulties. <laughs> but I don't know about their, their import-export features and stuff. So that's, that's really where you're going to... Uh, where you're going to run into issues getting stuff out of there. So that's something that I might not be able to find out until I start to do it. What you probably want to do is get a hold of somebody that is going to set you up with, uh, with Magento and ask them, they're probably going to have, you know, all the answers for you as far as that goes. So does Magento, they don't host their own stuff. I need to host it someplace else. Magento, I believe you can go either way. I think you can host it on your own server. Um, and I, I believe they have a, a cloud hosted option as well. Okay. So which one is better? Um, you know, the cloud hosted version, they're going to keep updated for you. They're going to, all the techs worries are going to be on their side. Um, I personally, in the past, I've really liked stuff on my own servers to keep control of it and make sure, you know, if they fold up their shop next week that all, everything I've built doesn't disappear. But, you know, these days the cloud stuff is, it's pretty solid. You know, like, like this is my first transition into Kartra being off of my own server, you know, to run stuff. In the past, I've always kept everything on my own servers because I just didn't, uh, I just didn't feel good about you know leaving that in someone else's hands. But I think now it those kind of worries are are kind of past. Okay, what do you think about the the stuff that Michelle was bringing up? How is that going to impact things? You know, I don't think that stuff's going to have a real huge impact on you. Um, I, you know, there's, there's definitely like some, some things on any shopping cart that it's not going to be perfectly ideal. There's, <laughs> I don't know that there's one out there that's just like the dream cart that just has everything. But of all the stuff, you know, that I've used and from a marketing perspective, if you're interested in doing marketing and you don't want to like go through the, the technical nightmare of Infusionsoft or any of those, Kartra has just made that a really, really easy program to, to do your marketing, your landing pages, you know, you can 
build sites, uh, you know, everything's all in one where they're not nickel and diamond yet. Okay. So that's, and, and again, you know, there's, there's nothing that's going to be perfect for everybody, but, uh, but for me, I've, you know, I've got a pretty, pretty broad list of terrorist demands and it's kept me pretty happy so far. <laughs> Like I was telling Travis, you know, I was a little concerned with how tight they are on who they'll actually send mail to, but you know, he's right. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather have the majority of my mail get through and maybe a few don't because, you know, who knows, maybe they got on a, a list somewhere or they complain because that's, you know, the big thing is if you get your IP blacklisted for, for mail, it's a real pain in the butt. You know, all of a sudden now half of your mail is not getting delivered and you don't even know it. You know, there could be entire networks that shut you out that you can't even get to. And, you know, again, you don't know. So. Stop being such a spammer, John. Yeah, exactly. My spam days are long, long gone. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Michelle says Kartra affiliate program is for promoting Kartra and your own products. Yes. Yeah. So for those of you that didn't get that, the affiliate program that's built into Kartra, it's kind of, it's their affiliate program. It's not a specific affiliate program just for you. You're adding your products into it. So if someone wants to be an affiliate for you, Basically, they sign up for the Kartra affiliate program and they choose to promote your products. So they're promoting your products through the Kartra affiliate program. Hopefully that's uh, understandable for everybody. Now, when they're doing your stuff, they are specific to that. Like when they go into their portal, their control panel, there's a button for each product or product line that they're affiliating. So when they click on your button, they're going to see all of, all of their stats that are related to you. Like how many people hit your landing page, how many people click through, how many people bought, what their commission is, what's owed to them. All of that stuff is going to show in there. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty cool thing to have happen. When you sign up, just so you guys know, when you sign up for Kartra, you are automatically signed up as an affiliate to sell their items. So when you sell Kartra or you give your Kartra affiliate link, there's in there, when you click on the affiliate button inside your, your portal, you'll see all of their products are in there. That's just by default. When you sign up, you're automatically, you know, they're the first affiliate that's in your, in your program. Now, if you wanted to be an affiliate for someone else that's in there, you just go into the marketplace and select which products you want to sell or you want to be an affiliate of. And then it gets you your links and then you promote those links and everything is tracked right through there. So it's, it's, it's different, but it's, it's still pretty cool. It's kind of like signing up for ClickBank. You know, when you go to ClickBank, ClickBank is a clearinghouse for affiliates and affiliate products. When you sign up for there, you can go in and you can selectively say, okay, I want to, I want to sell this product and this product and this product. You don't have to sell all of the products. You, you select and choose which ones you want to promote. And Kartra is very similar to that. Um, same with JVZoo, all these big affiliate networks, Kartra is just, their plan is to become one of those and attract all the people to put their products inside a Kartra to be able to so be sold to the Kartra affiliate network. So pretty, uh, it's a, it's a pretty robust system on the back end. Now I have not looked into algorithms for this because I know in ClickBank, they've got a thing called gravity. And one of the things is like, if you're an affiliate and you're a hotshot, you want to go in and you want to find the products that have gravity in there. Those are the ones you know sell really well. So I don't know exactly what the, what the algorithm is here in the Kartra system 
to be able to do that, to like rise to the top and be the one that everyone wants to promote. So once I get my, uh, my head around it, I'll, I'll go ahead and share what you need to do or what affects that. So right now it looks like it's just alphabetical. So <laughs> going back to our old alphabetized days of listings and directories, I can tell you that the alphanumeric number one is the tilde sign, which is that little sideways squiggly thing at the very top left of your keyboard. So if you put that in the beginning of the name of your product, guaranteed you're going to rise to the top. And it won't be seen, nobody, they just don't recognize it. So it doesn't affect the name of your product any. So. And that's how I beat Yahoo when they first came out as an elect, uh, uh, a directory, alphabetical directory. I would go in and put the tilde sign in the title of all my clients. <laughs> so that's how I got Water Ventures to the top of an alphabetical directory and for years, and they still are. All the alphabetical directories still out there still show Water Ventures at the top. <laughs> so... All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, we'll be back on next week, regular time. If you have any, any questions, just hit me up between now and then. So have a great week, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Hey, John, can I get five minutes with you? Ten minutes, maybe? Uh, yeah, let me close this out and then just hop back on. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs>